So team, welcome back uh, to the continuation day two for our uh, September 29th Selenium batch. So let's take a quick look at what we did on um, the day one and then we'll continue from there, right? So primarily, the whole objective was that we took a simple application admins.com. We learned how to record a certain application uh, using the Selenium ID and how to be able to run. So the steps we primarily took is we opened, oh, okay. So I'm not able to edit uh, the Excel team. Looks like the product license that I have, I have to uh, repurchase it. Uh, so probably uh, let me put those notes into a notepad at the moment, and then we can uh, try put it back into the Excel tomorrow. So the Selenium automation steps team. Just a quick review of what we did. One, we open Firefox. Right, because your IDE only works with Firefox. That's the reason you need to have Firefox installed on your machine. Then we, from Tools, you go and open Selenium IDE. Three, we ensured that record is pressed in. Four, uh, started to perform the steps on the application. Five is uh, stop the record. You don't have to actually stop the record. Six, we save the test case. Then seven, run the test, right? So what we performed primarily, if I open my Firefox, and using the Firefox tools option, I open ID. And let's open the test case that we created in a very quick manner, okay? So I'm going to go to the options, change the format to HTML team. That's the format we're still working on at the moment. So let's quickly open our test case, say open, and then let's go to our folder. In here, we have our test case ed underscore tc1, okay? So you can open this and you will see all the steps that we generated are out here, okay? Now, when we run this test, everything will run. You also learned very briefly how you could right click and put your breakpoints so that the test will pause at that part. You can run your test at a specific speed using this uh, slide bar. And I can have multiple tests, not just one test. Uh, similar to this, I can do multiple test cases and put them out here. And I can run one test case or the entire test suite that is called. Okay. Now, Let's try and run this test case in a very slow fashion to see how the recording worked and if we are able to come back and see how it uh, continues to record the application. So we're doing a run right now. So let's see how it performs. So there you go. It goes to admins.com. It performs the steps that are needed. And it moves forward executing all the steps that we want. So team, at this point, I'm assuming each of you have gone through those day one, day two, and day three videos, which I said are mandatory. Okay. Now, what I've explained in those is how, what are these commands and what are these target values? Okay. The command is the place where we are giving an answer to Selenium as to what we need to do. What do we want to perform? using our keyboard or mouse, what do we want to do on the application? Target is answering where. The value is giving any additional attributes as to what if you want to enter as text or select something from a drop-down list, then what do we do, okay? So at this point, if you see that the type calc underscore input, this is not working. It has failed. Can you see this? This is an error mentioning to us from the ID that we could not identify the element. Let's try and first go through and see what are these, how is uh, Selenium identifying these elements. So if I go to the uh, home page and let's say I go to this step, the same step you will also see it being displayed here, right? Now here is the target that we have used to identify that element. But how is Selenium actually identifying it? If you right click on this and go to inspect element, your Firebug team, which I was mentioning about. Uh, did I mention about Firebug yesterday? Uh, so in the day one? Team, did I mention at length on Firebug on day one? No. Okay. Fair enough. So what you can do, Firebug is a fantastic tool. What it does is basically 
if you go to google.com and you say firebug okay you would get the first result called get firebug click on this get firebug and then all these instructions are also there as part of the welcome back that was sent to you and say install firebug it is a free tool you don't need to purchase anything and you would get all the features that come with the firebug okay now what it does is let's say that here is my application edmund.com right now everything that you see on this website are called as elements they are similar to objects in QTP okay elements are basically giving the idea of what that element is and what are the identifiers for it so for example if you take a real exa life example your email ID or your SSN or your phone number could be unique enough to identify you right so the first level of identification that is provided is if there is a field called ID or name then selenium will pick these if it is there and it is unique okay this is the first element identifier the next one is called as X path and then there are other ways of CSS and so on there are different stages of element identification if it is easy it will start with the basics else it will go to the next parts of it so what that means is let's say this is my field okay now at this moment when you've installed firebug like with the simple steps that I showed you you would see that under tools you will see this firebug uh, icon out here okay so you know you can use this to go and uh, launch firebug or you could see this icon here the easiest thing to do team is right click on an element and you will now see a new thing called as inspect element as part of your Firefox and this comes with as an added feature from firebug okay everything that is below this are some of my most recently used uh, commands so you can ignore them at the moment but inspect element is what should be interested what inspect element does is it takes me to the HTML code for that specific element okay it takes me to the HTML code for that specific element why the HTML code all these automation tools be it selenium or QTP and so on what they primarily try and do is they go through the source code of this HTML so if you right click and say view page source this is the entire HTML content that is used to display what you see here okay what you see here is nothing but an output from what you get from this HTML so you change the HTML everything will change here now what this uh, these tools automation tools do is they go into specific areas of these each of these small elements it could be a edit field it could be a button it could be a text it could be a link it could be an image a drop down there are different types of it okay in terms of identifying it in this case if I right click and I say inspect element how can I instruct selenium selenium please learn about this element please understand where this element is located so that tomorrow if I ask you to run you should be able to know where and how you can identify that element. when it goes into the code which is the next part of it it looks at that this is the whole tag that is used to identify it if I copy this whole tag and I put it into my notepad what you see is a HTML complete beginning to ending tag okay the HTML tag for this is called input okay team as a general advice every one of you must obtain the basic HTML uh, knowledge okay it's a very essential thing so go to the website called w3schools.com it's a very very simple tutorials that you have there HTML is very easy simple and how you can work with it what is important is what are these tags the beginning start with HTML the heading of biggest size is h1 then the next size h2 a para starts with p all of this simple essential tags you should get a brief idea you don't have to be an expert but get an idea on it okay w3schools.com definitely complete your html tutorials from there now here is the html code for that specific element 
okay you change anything in this it will change in the application okay for example let's say enter monthly payment I right click and I say inspect element you see this label enter monthly payment and close label this is a starting tag and an ending tag and corresponding to what should be the font the size the color all of those are provided by something called as your uh, cascading style sheets and they are your CSS codes okay the font the look and feel of it is provided by the CSS that is linked with okay now when you see this code if I go here and I type something something new you will see the changes happening on the browser okay is it happening on the application admins.com slash calculators at the server where it is hosted no whenever you go to a website what happens is basically that the HTML file for that website is downloaded onto your local machine and you're seeing a reflection of that okay so if you go to the next page then you send a request that you want to go to the next page based on what you enter that information is passed as an output from you and as an input to you you get the new HTML code for the next page okay this firebug tool is also essential not only to read what you uh, to understand what these different elements are but it is also to play around if you want to change something in the HTML code you could do that it is only on your local machine that it is happening it is not happening on the application by itself all right now it's basically saying that this is how I identify something new that is where it is in the code okay in this case input okay if you let's say value I'll change it to 100 okay mm. Value is not changing anyways out here. I expected that it will probably change to 100. It didn't change to 100. But what it is giving you is many attributes into it. Okay. There are many attributes. ID is one attribute. Class is another attribute. Type is another attribute. And name is another attribute. Okay. So the way the recognition of an element works is, is there any other element in the web page in that HTML code with this ID so if you do a control C go to that source that we went where is that source code closed it okay right click view page source and do a control F and put this you will only find that there is only one element with that ID if you continue to search and put in that again you will not find any more results why because there's only one element with that ID so that is enough for the selenium automation tool to recognize that element okay so it can just say ID equals calc underscore input one and then it's more than sufficient the next value it can take is name calc default value now let's look at control C this control F control V so I see this here next I see it again another place next I see it in so many places right so if you go into the IDE team and look at how it has identified the where part the target it said ID equals calc underscore input one why didn't it take name equals and you can remove you should remove this quotes team when you click on find it will tell you which element it is going to okay there you go it's going to the first element but the problem is for the first element it will work but if you want to do the same thing on the second element then it's a problem for us okay so that's the reason it took ID because it was unique to that value only so if I undo this now is selenium identifying any specific object to find out you go to that step and click on this find button it should be able to highlight that specific element let's say click and wait name equals go so what is this the command it is doing it is clicking on a button and waiting for it when you go to that step you will also see a reference window down which explains what that does okay clicks on a link a button a checkbox or radio button it's the same command okay if the click action causes a new page to load then wait for page to load will be automatically generated okay now what happens is when you click on this go button it will take you to the new page so the click and wait command is actually 
clicking on an element and waiting for the new page to load. It is doing both commands in the same thing. If it is just to click on an element, it doesn't have to wait. Okay? Click and wait is telling click on the button and since the page will take some time, let's wait. But how long should we wait? That default setting is out here and it says 30,000 milliseconds or 30 seconds. That's the default. Now, team, for all of you who are listening to these sessions for the first time, it can be uh, relatively not that very simple to capture because you're looking at something called IDE, you're looking at HTML code probably for the first time at a detail level and this fire bug me. Okay? There are many things being introduced. Then how do you help yourself? You help yourself by continuously participating in the sessions and focusing on what we're doing and practicing. Okay? Keep on doing that blindly. Do not even think, can I do it, can, can't I do it? No, forget it. You will absolutely be able to do it. It's very simple. Okay? So, if I right click and I go, I'm able to find that. And I can use that specific identification to find out where it is. If the name is not present, the first thing I believe, it takes the name attribute. If the name is not unique enough, it will go to the ID. Okay? The next thing it will do is it will go to XPath and CSS. Okay. Now let's come to XPath and CSS in a brief minute. Uh, and in fact, all of this I've covered in those three sessions that I've asked you to watch. But since it was essential for me to explain, I'm still going ahead. Okay. Now this is done. How about creating a new test case, a completely new test case? And we tell the uh, code what to do, where to do. What should we do in command? We should say what. Uh, what we want to perform. The first command, what is it team? Can anyone tell me what is the first command that we need to give? Let this be interactive. Please use your chat to send me a message on it. Open. Yes. Why open? Because unless you say open, it will not navigate to the application. If I say, see as soon as I type open here, you will see open, open window, open window and wait. Each of them have different meaning. Okay, when we work with multiple windows, we'll come to this window identification and so on. But in this case, it is open command. Now, the target. In the target, this is the browser. What else should I give as a target? In this case, if I have to give a value and there is no specific identification for it, I just have to say, what is that URL? Either the entire path of the URL or if I give just a forward slash, it will take me to the base URL, which is edmunds.com. Or if I say, in this case, it is slash calculators. So this whole thing I have to give. Now it will take me from open calculators. Okay. Let's experiment it. As we write the code, let's continue to experiment and see what happens. So run this code. There you go. Do you see it going? Yes, great. Now what I want to do next, let's talk about a car loan calculator. So one test case is already created and we definitely got an error here which we ignored for now. That's okay. That's probably we experimenting around. Let's try and see what this car loan calculator do. What can I effort? We have done. We'll create this second test case writing ourselves. So out here what I have to do, what is, what do I want to do team? What is the method or uh, command that we need to pass for it? What is it that as a user that we want to give? Yes, team, come on. What should I give here? Yes, we have to type. It's an edit field. What will you do on edit field? We'll type on it. Okay? And then what is the target? Now, how do we identify it? <clears throat> okay? If you right click on this field now and go to inspect element, you will see those details. Okay? Let's start with saying name equals whatever. Let's start with identifying it that way. Okay, where is that name? There you go. So I will copy this name and paste it here. That's the name. And I'll say name equals this. Now, like I verified this, I will verify this step also before I do something else. I'll say find. What is it pointing to? It is still pointing to what can I effort? Why? Because it found that with this attribute, Element attributes are diff, uh, the uh, identifiers for those elements. This was the first element. It is not going to the second element. Then what do you do? Okay. So name is not sufficient. In that case, I will give ID 
in case it is sufficient and here is my ID so click on that space do a control C and just paste it here now you say find do you see this team it is now going and highlighting the next element that you want okay the actual element that we are desiring to work with now what else should I put in the statement what do I want to type okay enter a vehicle price let's say $25,000 is what I'm looking at so I put a type that is a command how to identify name was duplicate so I used ID then I put the value great now <clears throat> let's talk about this option let's just experiment it's not recording so I will first manual experiment and see when I click on select a vehicle I get different things wow okay there's so many things here very good it's a good application to play with so let's create one simple one first and then we will move forward okay so what are we doing are we recording no we are writing our own steps in ID now let's write 25,000 because that is what we expect the application to do when the second step gets executed next I want to click on the go button right so how will I identify go button again right click inspect element okay now I see the details for this button class equals small see if I say okay sorry out here what will we do on a button team click yes and then next I see that button class equals small so let's try this or okay let's try with name first name equals go and say find it is still pointed to the first one we want this one why does the first one found with this properties with this attribute and value how about I say type equals submit type equals submit and say find it is not even finding anything just with a type it is not type is never an enough qualifying attribute okay it's an ID or name which is the most important ones to start with then what do I do so if you expand this you will see here are the other details for it okay what happened in our first test case let's take a quick look at it name equals go this worked because it is pointing to the first one in my second test case I can't say name equals go for this element then what do I do I don't have an ID I have a name which is not unique then what is my option It is basically saying that I'm trying to find someone with a first name first name too many people in my class okay let's say last name okay great there's only two people now but which among these two people then what should I do IDs I have not given I have not given any student IDs for you people so my team rather sorry about that uh, so then what do I do team so next is how about the date of joining or the date of uh, registering date of coming to this class something else right or where you are located in alphabetical order or your age so the next level of identification is called as your X path okay the next level of identification is called the X path what is X path it's a very simple way of identifying or giving specific information to identify different elements on a web page okay so the simplest way to go about is just practicing on XPath so if you right click on this in your fire bug now and say copy XPath what will happen is it will copy the XPath and it will put it out here you know in your uh, thing now what it is telling me is here is the identifier for this element how it is completely different it is not saying anything like ID equals this or name equals the whole structure is changed now see it says forward slash HTML so basically it is telling how to go to that element okay look at how it is working very interesting these tools are it is saying HTML tag first okay where is HTML okay in the HTML tag search for the body tag so if you go down inside HTML you'll find the body tag in that go to the fourth div uh, HTML tag so you keep searching this is the first this is the second then um, the third and then the fourth okay but this is not necessarily the one that we're looking at 
it is um, somewhere else so we must have missed then it will say in within that there is second div so this is the first div within it <coughs> sorry team i believe it is referring to the uh, third one so it is telling where it is it is telling the nested loops within html there is a body within body go to the fourth or the fifth div within div go within this div go to another div go to another div and these numbers are referring to which order is it is it the first second or third and so on then another then another then there is a form and then in that form there is a field set and then there is a button so it is giving the nothing but the absolute actually the relative path for that element it is relative to all the other elements so if anything changes in the application team okay if anything changes in the application let's say that this moves here or moves down then this will fail but as is if you copy this okay where is uh, click Uh, one second, team. I'm seeing. Type equals submit is not working. Team, one second, please. All right, Tim, sorry, I'm back. So now I put that whatever I got from that application and I put it in here. Now I'll say find. Does it do it? No. Locator not found. Okay. So it is saying that we're not able to locate that. Why? Because at the beginning you have to give two forward slashes, not just one. Now let's click on find. There you go. Now you're able to find that element. How? Using the next way called XPath. Okay, there is another way called XPath. Okay, but uh, that we will come to it. Tim. Okay, we'll come to it in the next uh, element. So now, hopefully, this is done. Let's try and run this test case till that point and let's see. Okay, navigated. Did we enter 25,000? Looks like, and we clicked on the go. Now we come to the next level where all the information is captured. Okay, team. Now what we want to do is, how about um, sales tax, titles, incentives and rebates. So let's talk about providing some rebate into it. This is my total uh, vehicle price. Then there is a default sales price. There's a title and registration and then incentive rebates. So let's enter a title and registration fee, something like $1,000. And we are getting a $2,000 factory incentive or a rebate that will get subtracted. Okay, let's put those two things there. So, what should I do, team? What is the command for this there? Type. Next, what is the target? How do I identify this? Simple. Right click, inspect element. First thing, I will see if I have anything that is unique. I have a name. So, let's copy that name first. Put it in here and say find. There you go. I don't even have to say name equals this. Okay. It's a good way to do it, however, but it is not necessary that I say the attribute name has this value. And now I click on find. Now I'm able to find that automatically using this. Do I have to go to the XPath? No. Now this is done. Let's say that we want to give a 1200 is our uh, title and registration. This is done. Again, we're going to type and we will try and find this element. How will I find this? Right click inspect element. So first thing I will do is copy the name again and put it in here and say find. There you go. This is working. I'll say name equals and again search. Whenever you change the make sure you check your code because things can go wrong anywhere. You never know what is breaking out. Okay. So check your code as and when you're changing it. Let's uh, say that we're getting a $2,000 rebate from the factory. Now we are able to write our own code using ID with simple steps. Have we mastered XPath? Have we mastered element identifications or all the commands? No, but we're starting to, we're getting to understand that. 
all right so having typed these now let's talk about something else but how about the same thing i write type see it's all about experiment it's all about playing around team okay type and look at so interesting you can use these applications to automate any of your lot of your daily lives as well experiment around all the applications that you use try and record and see how it is identified how about using the xpath instead of this inspect element we got this element right click on the code copy xpath put it in the notepad and here i get a different one why did I get a different one altogether? This is the other way of identifying it. Okay, the other way to identify any element, the format is two forward slashes. Next comes the HTML. Next comes the HTML tag. Okay, then comes a square bracket. At symbol, <clears throat> the attribute one equals whatever value in it then I can say and attribute to equals another value into it and then close brackets how many other attributes I want I could continue to add in this fashion this is telling me where it is located in the page okay it is not telling me the social security number or it is not telling me uh, the uh, phone number or the last names and so on no it is telling me what is the address for that Okay, if someone changes the address, uh, you know, in respect to the others, then it's a problem. It is not even physical address; it is relative address. They live besides this person. Uh, this, they, here is the neighbor's information. If the neighbors change, then you're in trouble. Okay, then you cannot identify that. That's what this part is doing. Where in the application it is there? Here, what it is doing is it is saying that star is anything. So the same thing I can write in the correct fashion. The way I can write for this one is the next part of XPath. So XPath has two ways of identification. The first is the whole absolute or relative path to it, and then the using the attributes and their values into it. Okay. Now in this case, if I say uh, I want to find the XPath for this through attributes and their values. I right click go to that element now I can start with the beginning what is the HTML tag that you see team input so first write two forward slashes next comes the HTML tag input in this case I didn't even put input because it felt only with the ID it is enough to identify that's what it captured automatically and now I will open square brackets at what should I take let's take the property name how about name itself copied that the uh, sorry the, not the property the attribute is name and the value into it is this and close your square brackets copy this go to your id put it in here and say find there you go it found it i didn't have to use id itself i could have used name i could have also used other value uh, variations into it I could have also said and ID equals something okay different ways to identify the same types of elements then the final way is something called as a CSS which will automatically get loaded we the most ideal way to work team is this X path by giving the definition of the elements how we go to that specific element okay now you can identify it so these two things are doing the same thing it's just the way we write the identifiers is different so in this case let's put uh, uh, 1800 so first we put 2000 then we changing the value in the same thing to 1800 and uh, let's click on calculate let's try and end that for now so what are we trying to do? click okay and where element identification the target inspect element and here you go button value equals calculate okay team how should we write the X path can someone tell me don't give me the whole X path tell me what comes first for this identifying what is the first thing in this format in this X path format yes two forward slashes thank you Amit next what does it come button correct next square brackets yes not curl brackets 
yes next comes at now we said that is the HTML tag and at now we have to give a property what property shall we give okay let's say value equals calculate then close let's try this how about trying with something else first how about trying with type equals submit you know just experimenting in this case I can give any information as long as it works and it identifies it that's more than enough make sure your caps and everything is correct and you have the uh, right spelling for it so if I say this and say find there you go with type equals submit we automatically got one see I didn't even have to go to the other one but you never know what could change what if there's more than one element object with that use the value for buttons which is most predominantly good okay value equals calculate and now say find there you go all right so now we could do all of this so what happens when we actually click on calculate at this point it gives us the information what information does it give me team it tells me that here is the total loan amount that we require so how do I get this in here how do I get this in here so if I right click and go to inspect element I have this identifier span ID equals block total payment so if I copy this put it in here and just say ID equals and say find there you go but the right way put to put it is to backslashes uh, forward slashes span open square brackets at ID in quotes give this is the same thing but this is a better format you that can be consistent with everything else now say find let's move up and down so that that highlight has disappeared now we'll click on find again there you go now we found it so you are able to find the elements in different ways have we mastered it no team we are on the road to getting it mastered but the simplest and most efficient way is this format that I'm telling you HTML tag at attribute value and at attribute value that way you can identify different ones okay what do I do on this what is it that I want to do team what I want to do is I want to get this value or verify this value I should have an ability to calculate based on my inputs very tough to do it on an IDE there are JavaScript statements and all that you could include but it is it is absolutely a BS it is not needed why because all of this is just a preliminary introduction to once we go to the programming using Java there you have the power to do what you want how you want it make it the most efficient code okay that is what the real talent that you should capture in this case right now I can just say that I want to store this text into a variable okay there's something called as a variable also so for that there is a store text command do you see this and then I can give a value called dollar uh, loan I'm not even sure if this is the correct format uh, because it's just an experiment because team honestly I don't work with the JavaScript part or the ID everything is Java based for us okay JavaScript and Java are absolutely different now I can print this value by a command called as echo echo and then if I say value is uh, or loan amount is and then <clears throat> how do I do this I don't remember uh, this and loan is what I'm thinking so basically the first thing is saying whatever you see here get the text from there and put it in here what you see between these two tags team is the text okay that value you change something in here okay your text changes click on calculate okay this is not changing but this text for example is changing so let's do a quick run to see how our code is working okay I'm saying store text is a command but which text text from this target but store it into where into a variable in this script called dollar loan dollar is a sign used for uh, uh, recognizing what are variables then echo is a command which will take that and put it into a log 
it will give this whole thing loan amount is and when I say dollar and in curl brackets loan and I'm assuming that this is the correct syntax it should print whatever value it has captured in there okay now let's try and run this and see how it works so team most importantly are what do you want to do where you want to perform it what is the value see team what I did and what is not correct and I hoped that it will throw some kind of an error is that hmm, Hmm. What okay, the first thing I wanted expected it to fail is this click. This click is taking me to a different wait uh, page, right? So ideally this should be a click and wait command. It's not just click. Ideally it should be click and wait. So same is calculate. It is not taking me to a different page. It is still staying on the same page, but we have to wait for a certain amount of time for that value to come up. Okay. So in that case, what I should do is right click and say insert new command. And there is a command called pause, which does not always work correctly, but we can try. Now I'm saying 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. So let's run this again and see what it is. Oh, Gayatri, you're saying uh, in the store text, the value should be only loan, is it? Not dollar loan? Probably, not sure. That's what I was assuming it to be. Now let's see. So the application is performing. Now let's see. Is it pausing for three seconds? No, it didn't. Uh, it didn't pause and it didn't even capture. So let's say loan and try and rerun this test now. See, it's all about experimenting with your code, all about trying to do it. And that's exactly what I wanted to do, team. Sometimes you can never say that in one hour I'll finish this exercise. It may take you three hours because you may be stuck for a certain amount of time. See this pause 3000 is not working correctly and even this is not giving the correct result. I think it is dollar loan only. My question is that I don't think it is getting me the value. Uh, it is trying to capture whatever is coming here before. Let's see the log. Loan amount is and dollar loan executing this loan amount is blanks basically it captured nothing into the variable loan when we did this earlier we got dollar when I said dollar loan loan amount is and it gave dollar loan so the syntax I believe this is correct I don't have to give a dollar sign at the value where I'm storing it but when I want to display it team and do not worry about these things at a JavaScript level I believe some of these are JavaScript commands we should not bother too much. Most important is command, target, and values. All of this we can do very, very efficiently when we move it to our RC, uh, to our Eclipse platform to run it through Java. Okay. Now, what could be happening is it it is not pausing enough. That could be the problem. So insert a new command and let's experiment it on something else. Can I see this? This text will probably come up earlier to this. Okay, or uh, let's try and capture some other steps and repeat these steps only. Uh, let's say auto loan calculator. How about this? If I right click here, say inspect element, I get this identification. So if I right click and say um, copy X path, it will give me that entire X path for that, the path to it. Okay, now I take this path and what it should give me is uh, whatever is appearing here. So why is this find command not working for me team when I copied and pasted this whatever I got? Yes, I need to have double forward slash now say find there you go now you found it so basically what I'm saying is let's capture the text that is appearing here where here it can be any text that is appearing here, but whatever text is appearing here, let's capture that. So I'm saying store this text into a variable called uh, main text. Okay, this is the name I gave. Next, I will say echo this, insert new command. The reason I'm trying to do, do this is also try and buy a little more time for the next commands to, uh, for these elements to be uh, visible for the application because the pause is not working as is. In Java I can use the sleep command and that will be more efficient for me. 
so i'll say echo uh, main text is dollar curl brackets main text whatever i gave a name there again another experiment now let's try and execute this code and see okay so pause is there here which is not working let's try and put pause 5 and try and execute it okay so i can minimize this and see what's happening on the application also So team, in tomorrow's class, we will go switch over directly to RC, okay? I will show you where the Eclipse is to, there and all the information so that you can get that uh, installed on your system. All the documentation for installation, everything is provided, team. If there's some missing, I'm still building them up. So now you see what happened here. The store text, if you look at the log part of the store text, if you go down, uh, for the first one where I gave this, we put it into main text. When we're executing this, we got the result. Here is the thing. Main text is an auto loan calculator. Whatever text is appearing here at this area, this location in the HTML page. Next, since it waited by then, my loan also got loaded. And if you look at the log for the loan, you will see that it captured the value into loan variable. And when we did an echo command on this, we got loan amount is so and so. Now what if I want to change the values? What if I want to read these values not from here but from an Excel file like my test data? What if I want to compare the result that is coming from the application with what calculations, uh, 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 some kind of a formula that I have? What I want to put conditions that if this happens then print this or report this as an error and so on. What if I want to uh, be able to parameterize this and create a very structured way? For all of these things, your IDE stops. You cannot do many, many different combinations of it beyond this at an IDE level. Now we have to switch to the programming. It could be a Java code, it could be a JUnit code using uh, either RC or with WebDriver and so on. All right. Now, when we come tomorrow, I'll show you how we change that format of the same test into a JUnit 4 remote control format and take the same things, put it into a Java code and see how it works. Okay? Or I can do the same thing using a web driver code. It's just what and how this code is created and performed are different and there are different advantages for each of them. Okay? Web driver is more new and it is definitely going to be more popular slowly. But here is the HTML thing that we generated. So team, any questions? So I'm going to save this test case. Now we have two good test cases. One recorded, one self-written using Firebug. Firebug is a tool we'll constantly continue to use team because it helps us to go to that specific element very quickly. Any questions team? We know that Selenium consists of uh, IDE, RC, and GRID, but this little about Selenium web driver is, or is it part of, but part of IDE or RC? So, team, instead of little about web driver, what I did is I created a complete, very, very detailed keyword-driven framework. Okay, and note, team, my frameworks are not very simple frameworks that we use something called data providers and we do a very quick run. No, they're extremely detailed. Okay, from the scratch, how we design, build, and implement this frameworks. Okay, if you go into the recent August 18th batch, you will see that I have a brief overview of WebDriver in two classes. I think, uh, what is this? Day 10 WebDriver 1, Day 11 WebDriver 2. This is an overview of WebDriver, and then a complete keyword driven framework which took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, five sessions to develop a keyword driven framework and then another two sessions to make it a hybrid framework okay using the web driver all right so complete lessons are there we will take some of them now the whole idea is with these live classes and the recordings you have a complete knowledge end to it 
there is a lot that are coming up. I started putting uh, more things, how to install and how to uh, a video and a document, JUnit basics, how the basic JUnit code works, which I have not really covered earlier. I went straight into programming uh, then and the code related with it. Then JUnit basics 2 using uh, the IDE and RC then we have the code for it. So this way I'm continuing to put many many more sessions. So I'll put on uh, more on ant, grid, test ng, uh, some database testing and so on this way. Can we do any call for actions like QTP in Selenium? So all your specific uh, what test case you want to run, what do I want to run this test case or this test case, can I call a function which will uh, if I pass these parameters can give me the result based on the formula all of for all of those we create the methods or something called as functions in your Java okay and those will be done at a Java level all right team any other questions so team just as general advice please try and put your question first in the chat and absolutely you're more than welcome to uh, raise your hand go ahead Baskar you had your hand raised do you have a question for me I can't hear you, Baskar. Can you try and speak up and make sure you're not muted at your end? Once you enhance script from Selenium ID, chain it and customize in chain it, can that be replayed in ID? No, you cannot replay it in ID. You basically migrate away from IDE. Now what IDE is doing is it is taking the code from here, okay, and executing it on the application. When we do the Java, it will take the code from Eclipse or your Java code using server as a communicator in between it will come directly to the application there's no more IDE in it. Bhaskar you had your hand raised I, I have unmuted you but I cannot hear you for some reason hope that question answers is answered either way now let's see so what command should we use to import multiple values from Excel for a specific value so <clears throat> it's not a command uh, Shilpa it is a complete structure how can we read and write from an Excel using your Java code? If you want just those two, three sessions on it, if you go uh, to one of these, there you go, Excel write. Uh, here is the Excel read, the beginning session, the next session and how to write. So we use something called as Apache POI uh, and that tells us how we can create reusable functions that can read an entire Excel sheet into a two-dimensional array and we can store, use that, update that array and then load it back. So these are some of the other videos that you must watch uh, before our next week sessions. I will give you the list of videos to watch. Can you capture dynamic text which appears for uh, say three seconds and disappears from IDE? I don't know Sean. I don't know from IDE. In fact, I'm not even sure how we can do it from a Java point of view. The, I'm not sure, I don't have a ready solution for it, but what that means is that we have to further investigate into it, experiment it, change uh, some identifiers, uh, put some kind of a clauses. When? When will it start to show? When will it disappear? So if there is a specific time period, we have to give triggers that start capturing the text now. Once we get the logic of how that application is working and the timestamp for it, you can relay the same thing at a Java code. Okay, IDE is very limited. Uh, basic record run, save test cases, as scenarios, put some values and run it, good. But that's the beginning and ending of it, which is good. That is what it should be. Everything else should be at a coding level. What QTP has done is, oh, okay, for this entering these values, let's create data tables. For creating uh, something like functions reusable, let's create uh, actions. For creating uh, checks on these uh, texts or images and so on, let's create checkpoints. So they have an ID, QTP, and they also give all that other features there. So you omit those features and go directly to VB scripting. Same here, you don't have those features, so you don't even have to worry about what, uh, which one we should use. You go directly into coding. All right, team. Yes, pop-up messages and all that also are handled in some of the sessions already. They're there. How to close pop-ups? Uh, but I'll create one video on all these dynamic applications. Not ID, Java level. Yes, ID also. I'm sure you should be able to do it. But why should you do it when you can do it at a coding level? All right, everyone. That's it for now. We'll see you everyone tomorrow then, and we'll continue from there. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye then.